So, um, so what we're going to be talking about then is how the electrons are arranged around the nucleus in an atom. And one of the key ideas here is that the electrons are quantized, not continuous, in the sense that there's only certain um, patterns that the electrons can take around uh, the nucleus. Okay. Some types of orbits or orbitals are allowed and some are not. And in fact, so we want to describe the characteristics that are allowed to the electrons. And it turns out that you can describe all the characteristics with four numbers, which are called the quantum numbers. And that's n. That's right. Well, that's the first one. So the first number is n. Do you remember what the, the name for n is? And the quantum, the Which quantum, quantum number is that? The principal quantum number. There you number. go. That's the first one we're talking about, so it's okay. not too hard to remember that that's the principal quantum number. So n is the principal quantum number. And do you remember what's the smallest number that n could take? Um, one. That's one, right. which is the ground state, right? Uh, let's see. One is the smallest it can take. Now, whether, what the, the ground state depends on how many electrons a, um, a, um, an atom has. If an atom has many electrons, then, it might then in its ground state, it might have to have some electrons in n equals 2 or n equals 3. So the ground state is when all the electrons are in the smallest possible quantum numbers. Okay. Um, so, but if, so if you only have one electron, then the ground state is when that electron is in n equals 1. Okay, but so if you have hydrogen, it's yeah, okay. That's right. But if you have, um, say, say for um, lithium, which has three electrons, well, then its ground state is when two electrons are in the n equals 1, and one electron is in the n equals 2, because there's only room for two electrons in the n equals 1. Okay. So the ground state depends on where all the electrons are. Okay. Um, and so the ground state is when all the electrons are at the lowest possible quantum numbers. Okay. Maybe that'll make more sense as, as we look at more of these. So what's the next possible quantum number after 1? 2. That's right. And three, and theoretically, this can go on forever. And again, we can see this is a quantized category and not continuous. For example, n can't be 1.5 right. or 2.6. That's what it means to be quantized. That's why this is called a quantum number. Quantum just means it only takes on certain discrete values, not any value on a continuum. And you were saying that you wanted to focus especially on kind of what do these mean. Well, we could think of n as telling us what shell of electrons um, okay. we're in. So, um, so this shell, is this the shell that's closest or furthest from the nucleus? Okay. Yeah. So this would be the smallest shell that's closest, and this is the next smallest that's next closest, and this is further away and bigger. And we've already talked about where would electrons most like to be? Closest. Yeah, they want to be as close as possible to the nucleus. That makes sense because, remember, the electrons are negative and the nucleus is positive, and right. negatives want to get as close to the positives as they can. So why would the electrons ever be up here? Well, there's two possible reasons. First of all, there's only a certain amount of room in each shell. So once you've filled up a shell, you've got to put the, the new electrons in the further out shells. Okay. So that's one reason why an electron would go in a, in a further out shell, because the earlier shells are filled up too much. Also, we can, if we put in extra energy, we can push an electron from a close shell to a further shell. So. Okay, so that's the basic idea of the principal quantum number. Do you remember what the next quantum number in the list is? Um, L. Yeah. L. Uh, do you remember what the name for that is? This is the principal quantum L number. L is the number is equal to angular node. That's right. Although that, oh, that's oh, not the name for um, it, but that's right. Orbital shape. Uh, that might be what you're instructing. Let's see, is that the orbital shape? Yeah, this does tell you the shape of the S orbitals. E that's right. Your textbook calls this the angular momentum quantum number. The textbook calls this the angular momentum quantum number. Okay. Um, but uh, you're right that what this really does is it tells us the shape of the orbitals. N tells us how, what shell we're in, and L tells us the shape of the orbital. An orbital is a part of a shell. So a shell can consist of a bunch of individual orbitals. That's right. So even the, the okay, so you can have, you can be talking about one shell, but one shell can have different number of orbitals? That's right. So the orbitals are like subcompartments in a shell. Uh, the, the shell is like the big compartment, and that, that's split up into subcompartments, which are the orbitals. Okay. And this tells us basically what type of orbitals we are focusing on. 
Well, do you remember what is, um, well, let's see. So what, how, if you know what n is, what, how do you figure out the possible values for l? Um, do you know the relationship between n and l? One. That's right. So what's the smallest possible value for l? Zero. And then one, then two, then three, all the way up to n minus one. And, is an, and then n minus one is a number of just general nodes as well. That's right. So n minus one is the total number of nodes. Okay. In the orbital. That's good that you know that. So for example, suppose that n equals 3. Mm -hmm. What would be the possible values for L? 0, 1, 2. What that means is that there are three different types of orbital in the third shell. At the third ED. That's right. So we might as well go on and, and take a look at that. I, I have a question about mm -hmm. that. Okay, so if, if its quantum number is 3 and then L can equal 0, 1, 2, which means SPD, right. does that mean it, ha it has is that potentially what it could have, or does it have all F3 of SPD? It has all, it has all three of those orbitals. That's right. However, the orbitals may or may not have yeah, any I'll electrons try. in them. Okay. You should think of the orbitals maybe like pockets. Um, so a pocket still exists even if there's nothing in it. Uh, just because a pocket exists doesn't mean that there's necessarily something in it. So if you're in the third shell, mm -hmm. the third shell does have these three different types of pockets. The S pocket, the P pocket, and the D pocket, and there may or may not be electrons. One thing that confuses students sometimes is the distinction between whether you have an orbital and whether the orbital has electrons in it. So for okay. example, the third shell definitely does have these three different types of orbitals, okay. but these orbitals may or may not have electrons in them. Just because there's no electrons in an orbital doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's just like an empty pocket. Okay, and then so what would be like the difference between like having the same quantum number like one s and two s, but the same um, but the same shape like s, like what what or like having th like three p and two p or like it, it just generally for any of like what would be the difference in, between those two? Sure. Well, yeah, so let, let's uh, work out the pieces to that. First of all, just for completeness, what's the letter for the L equals 3? F. So these represent the different types of orbitals, and we can see there's two different types of names for orbitals. We can name them with numbers, or we can name them with letters. Okay. Now, why do these different orbitals need different names? Because they have different shapes. For example, do you remember what's the shape of an S orbital? Uh, spherical. Yeah, that's not what S actually stands for, but we can imagine that that stands for spherical. Uh, so an s orbital would be spherical, kind of like this. What's the shape of a p orbital? Figure eight. Dumbbell. Yeah, figure eight or a dumbbell. Good. And then the d and f orbitals have more complicated shapes that I won't bother trying to draw, but there's pictures of those in your textbook. Now you are asking, what's the difference between the 1s and the 2s orbitals? Well, there's a couple of differences, but the, the, the most important difference is which of the, these would be bigger, the 1s or the 2s? Yeah, that's the most important difference. The 2s orbital is just bigger than the 1s orbital. So um, where, does, where is the electron closer to the nucleus if it's in a 1s or a 2s orbital? The 1s. Yeah, and so where would the electron rather be in the 1s or the 2s? 1. Yeah, well, that's the most important difference between um, these two different types of orbitals. So these both have basically spherical shapes, Wait, but is, this one is bigger. Sorry, why would it rather be in a 1s? Well, the 1s is smaller which means that it's closer to the nucleus. Does that make sense so far? That makes sense, yeah. Right. But remember that the nucleus is positive and the electron is negative, and unlike charges attract. So because the electron is negative, it wants to be as close as possible to the nucleus. Um, it, sorry. And then also for the M part of that, let's say you have a, a 1, or let's say you have like a, a 4D or whatever. You can still have all those multiple Ms those are all part of the same um, like element sort of thing, the atom, I guess. Right. And they're just different, they're different sides of the atom, is that how it works? Well, let, let's try to work that out, okay. yeah. Let's, let's finish talking about the L's and then we'll go on to the M's, basically, but that's a, a good question. Can I ask a question about the L's? Yeah. 
Um, so let's say you're like 4f. Does that mean if you're 4f or like a larger quantum number of a specific L, does that mean you have every one, like does a 4f also have a 3f, a 2f, and a 1f in it? I guess no, we shouldn't think about that. We, um, this is a specific, um, this is a specific type of orbital. Um, what we would say <coughs> is that the, the n equals 4 shell has S-type orbitals in it, P-type orbitals in it, D-type orbitals in it, and F-type orbitals in it. But we wouldn't say that the D orbitals are part of the F orbitals. We would say that all these orbitals are part of the fourth shell. 